Hello and welcome to round two of my backlist books project TBR thing. Um, I did this last September for the first time. I created a TBR of 10 books that had been on my TBR for a very long time, books that I'd owned for years. I started tracking when I purchased books in 2019, so everything before then is kind of just lumped in together. And as I was like reading books and like marking things off of my spreadsheet, I realized that the majority of the books I read are more recent purchases. Like not necessarily within the last year, but definitely within the last couple of years. I don't do tons of reading off of my like deep backlist. Like anything I bought prior to 2019, I definitely read those books, but like not to the same degree that I'm reading more recent purchases, which makes sense. The books that have been on my shelf for like six, seven, ten plus years, you know, my reading tastes have changed. I've forgotten that I've purchased them, like out of sight, out of mind, you know? It's like I've forgotten what interested me about that book, like why I bought it. Because, you know, when I buy a book, there's a reason, there's something that drew me to it. I don't necessarily remember that like seven years after the fact, so I'm not mad that I prioritize more recent purchases, but I started doing this project to kind of like focus on those, you know, deep backlist books that have just been sitting there forever, like make myself read them. If I don't like them, I can unhaul them or DNF them or whatever, but I need to do something with them. Um, I would say about half of the books on my TBR spreadsheet, maybe a little bit more than half, are prior to 2019 and then the rest are after 2019 so I've got a ways to go on this I've got like more than 300 books but it's fine it's just a fun project I found it really helpful and it really worked for me so I figure I'll just keep doing it for as long as I find it helpful <laughs> the first book I have is Isabel Allende's Eva Luna this was on my September TBR of last year I think which was around the time I stopped doing monthly TBRs. It just stopped working for me. This works so much better. But I do really want to read this. This was part of my first ever book haul on booktube, which was fun. But I, I just never read it. I own several of Isabel Allende's books now. But I keep putting them off. And the only thing I've ever read from her is like a short story from when I was in school. I do really want to read this though. I don't really know what it's about. I think this is maybe her most popular. It's for sure the one that I've heard the most about. But stoked. Um, and then also from that same TBR, Don Quixote. Um, I've never read Don Quixote. I, I tend to avoid classics because I find classics intimidating. So I was like, let's just put the most intimidating brick of a book on this TBR and, and try to read it. It's how many pages? Oh, please let it, it's over a thousand. I was going to say, please let it be less, but it's like a thousand fifty. Exactly. So I'm going to try to read this. <laughs> I figure I'm only putting one classic on this list because it's this one. I want to focus on reading more classics. I just read Dracula and I actually managed to get through that. I know this is not quite Dracula, but <laughs> I think I can maybe read it if I just like really try, put forth an effort. Like it's stupid of me to just buy these classics and never read them because I went to in principle and then I get lazy, but... <laughs> I've heard good things about this, but I've also heard a lot of people say it was like funny, and I don't necessarily do funny in books very well, so we'll see. Um, but this will be an interesting project at some point. Every Soul a Star by Wendy Mass. This is a middle grade book. She wrote A Mango Shaped Space, which I love. It's one of those books I always go to when I want to cry, because that book makes me cry. But I've never read anything else by her, and I just picked this up ages ago because I would like to read more by her. But I also don't read tons of middle grade, which I think is why I've been putting it off. So shall be reading this. Um, and also I try to add some like quicker, easier books to this list just so I don't get totally bogged down with stuff like Don Quixote and like dense nonfiction. But yes, every soul star. The Nine, Inside the Secret World of the Supreme Court by Jeffrey Tubin. Like I said, I I'm, I'm using the middle grade book to kind of space these out. Um, this is a nonfiction book about the Supreme Court that I was supposed to read for my government class in high school, and I never did because despite really enjoying legal nonfiction at the time, I just do not work well under a required reading list, so I never read it. 
Um, but I always got the vibe that I would find it very interesting. And yeah, this has been on my TBR, on my shelf, since I was 17. So this might be the oldest one on this list. Refuge and Unnatural History of Family in Place by Terry Tempest Williams. This is a created nonfiction book that kind of ties together nature and this wildlife refuge, um, the Bear River Migratory Bird Refuge, and her mother's cancer um, set in Utah. Yeah, it's just about that. It's supposedly really beautiful and lyrical and it's one of those, she's a poet, so I'm, I'm getting the vibe that it is gonna be a very lyrical, very like about the writing, which I really enjoy. I, I really like creative nonfiction. I love lyric essays and I get the vibe this is gonna be kind of closer to lyric essay than like prose which I enjoy. I just, I avoid reading those books and my boyfriend loves this. He said this was a great book and that I will really enjoy it and it's right on my alley and it sounds like it. I just, I've put it on several TBRs. I've picked it up several times. There's literally a bookmark in here. I've just never actually read it. <laughs> Martha Washington, An American Life by Patricia Brady. I'm 90% sure this is something my parents gave me when I was a child, trying to just be like educational they gave me a lot of these type books. It, this might be like a children's nonfiction, or it might be adult, I don't remember. But this definitely vibes as something my mother bought for me, because she was like, you like reading? Let me get you something useful. And of course I never read it, but I kept it for a reason. Like I could have unhauled it, I didn't, so I need to read it. Nonfiction is interesting, and I really should read more about the American Revolutionary War, because like, all I pretty much know about it is from school because, you know, they went over it every year from like first grade to high school basically. So it was like you got a really overview of it every single year in school and kind of burned me out on it. But also like I don't actually know that much about it because everything I got from it was from school. So should read more. Maybe this, I will find this interesting. Maybe this will get me over the hump and I will be like down to read more about like the 1700s in America. I don't know. I feel like I should, but I just, I, I never want to. Wishbone, A Memoir in Fractures by Julie Marie Wade. Once again, lyric essay. <laughs> this is much more lyric essay. Like this is literally like lyric, lyric essay. I got this for my lyric essay class in college. Um, which a lyric essay is basically a cross between creative nonfiction and poetry. It's kind of like when you write creative nonfiction, but you do it in a super like poetic lyrical writing style, it becomes a lyric essay. I took a class in college with a professor who was really great and he like made me fall in love with it. So this was from that class. And once again, never read it because I don't do well with required reading in school. I just never read anything ever, despite the fact that I clearly read things and enjoy them. Um, think I will love this. Probably. I hope. The Baker's Daughter by Sarah McCoy. This is a dual timeline novel about a German woman in Nazi Germany and then um, Texas in the early 2000s. Present day, which I assume present day for this was like the early 2000s. Anyway, it's about this woman who I think realizes that Nazis are bad in Germany and then that leads to trauma in her life, I assume, and then present day, she's like reflecting back on that with someone else in the present. I don't know. Um, this is one of those books I bought because like it seems fine, but like there's never anything that has made me want to pick this up. Like I never look at it and think I should read that now. It's always one of those books my eyes just kind of glance over on the shelf. Like I probably wouldn't buy this today because I've read a lot of books like this, but I read a lot more books like this like 10 years ago. This was very much my thing, so I don't know. Um, I figure I should read it. It's not very long. So. Endless Love by Scott Spencer. I wanted to desperately read this for a long time. I was so excited when I found a copy of this in the thrift store, like so excited. I was so down. I was like, yes, desperately, please give me this book. And then I never read it because I have a problem. Um, I watched the movie of this. And the movie was bad, but when I was looking at reviews of the movie, the movie was about a romance between these two teenagers and the girls from like a wealthy family, the boys from like the wrong side of the tracks, I think. That was the vibe. And her parents don't like the boyfriend and like 
kind of get restraining orders against him to like keep them apart because they think he's a bad influence yada yada and then he like saves the day in the end and they live happily ever after i think i watched this when i was like 21. <laughs> it's been a minute and then i was looking at reviews for the movie i don't remember why because i didn't really care about it that much and the reviews were like yo this book is wildly different in this book he's the villain who's stalking this poor girl the parents aren't trying to keep them apart the girl doesn't like him and is scared of him and he is the bad guy and that sounded fascinating to me and also so twisted i don't know if that's actually what this book is like because again everything i know about this book comes from reviews like three reviews that i read of the movie so this could be like just a romance but i don't know um but I think it's like very stalkery and weird and it's told from the perspective of the dude. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for this one. I, I just need to read it. Like I've hyped it up so much in my head that like I'm going to love this and fall in love and it'll be amazing. And I, I need to read it because I just, I keep putting it off. And then the series that I want to read is technically kind of a reread. Um, the Looking Glass Wars by Frank Better. Um, which is The Looking Glass Wars, Seeing Red, and Arch Enemy. It's a trilogy. This came out in I think like 2006 and I read this in 2006 when it came out and I read the sequel in like 2007-2008 when that came out and because I read this in middle school like I was like a kid reading these books as they were coming out and then I never got to Arch Enemy because it just came out like several years later I'd moved on like I just lacked all awareness of it but I always kind of meant to finish the series and it's been so long I remembered nothing about these except that I think it's like steampunky vibes it looks like it has steampunky vibes um where it's like sci-fi fantasy and stuff I don't know um but I remember it being dark and I remember enjoying it but also I was like 12 so who knows um, but I want to read them. I'm gonna reread all of them, obviously. Like, I could not just jump into Arch Enemy right now. I would have no idea, but I'm going to read all three. Hopefully I enjoy them. Yeah, um, uh, that has been the TBR. I don't know how long this will take me. Last time, I think it took me, like, five months to get through all of them. Um, well, technically I haven't finished yet. I have one left, um, but I'm pre-filming because this is something I can pre-film, but I think it took me, like, five months last time, so I figure, like, probably about the same this time. I'm not trying to prioritize these all and like read them all at once. This is more of like I leave them out on my shelf so I remember them and like always try to pick up like one or two a month and just like get through them. Um, but that is that is the plan for the next several months. I'll obviously be reading a lot of other books as well but these are 10 that I would really like to prioritize. Let me know down below if you've read any of these and what you thought of them if you have. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see y'all again soon.